press record. A new documentary is uh, hitting uh, Australian screens in April, a film called Ithaca. And it's my great pleasure to be speaking to Ben Lawrence, who wrote and directed the documentary Ithaca, and Gabriel Shipton, who produced the uh, documentary. Welcome to Movie Metropolis. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure. Now, this, uh, this film, which really details John Shipton's journey or quest to try and have uh, his son Julian Assange freed, um, is quite an incredible uh, journey and experience. How did it all come about that you made this film uh, about, particularly about John? Well, uh, Peter, so it was back in 2019 um, when just after Julian uh, was uh, taken from the embassy, Ecuadorian embassy and, and uh, locked up in Belmarsh prison uh, outside of London, uh, I went to see him there, I think it was August or maybe a little bit earlier in, in 2019. And at that time, uh, he was uh, on suicide watch. He was in the health wing of the prison. Um, now, some people think, well, if you're in the health wing of a prison, it's it's you know you get cups of tea and biscuits and things like that. But this is uh, you know a place uh, the, in the prisoners themselves call it the hell wing because it is where the most uh, you know mentally ill people are, the insane people, the um, the uh, chronically ill. Um, are all kept in that part of the prison. And at that time, he was in his cell 23 hours a day, uh, but, you know, in, in, you know, essentially a solitary confinement. And I went to see him in the prison that day, and uh, I left the prison thinking uh, that I might not see him again. I'd never seen him like that before. And, um, yeah, I just, uh, I sort of felt... Uh, that we had to we had to do something um, and use you know my my sort of uh, put my filmmaking <laughs> hat on and and started thinking of a way that we could tell a different side of the story um, you know how how um, you know how Julian experiences what's going on and how his family experiences what's going on and that's and and about that time John was travelling around Europe. Um, sort of raising awareness and putting together these groups and coalescing politicians and different things. And uh, he seemed the best sort of person to follow around at that time. And so we uh, got a camera person and started following him around, not not sort of knowing where the story would end up or how, how it would come together. Um, and so we followed John for quite some time. And then, uh, yeah, and then Ben Lawrence came on and, um, you know, Ben and I, uh, sort of that and and sort of we're just on the same page for the from the very beginning and 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 that's when ben ben came uh onto the project and sort of pulled it all together and and um yeah the, i guess ben can take it over from there he can tell you a little bit more go ahead ben thanks <laughs> yes well look, it was um as soon as gabriel called me um which was in the middle of uh, 2020 um, and uh, talked to me about the filming that he had been doing and the plans that he had to make a documentary centering on uh, his father and Julian's father, John Shipton. I, I was immediately fascinated. I'd been following the story, uh, Julian and, and WikiLeaks, probably since 2010. So uh, every now and again, I was able to dip in and out of the story, just what was reported. And as obviously as a filmmaker to have access to a story like that as personal as it is from that perspective being made by the family um i just decided from that point on that we really needed to lean into that and the film was made from a position of love and i really wanted to uh examine and understand julian through the people that loved him and do love him and so that was kind of my premise for the film and to try and track john on his journey through europe and around the world really um, as he advocated and rallied Julian's supporters. Um, but we also at that point had the uh, extradition hearing uh, looming within uh, a couple of months from me being engaged. So after talking to Gabriel in August 2020, I was on a plane within the next few weeks and uh, outside the Old Bailey for uh, you know the following month filming the the, uh, the to and fro of the extradition hearing. And so that, that really is kind of the, the structure of our film. But Julian was always 
you know, he, he was silenced. And, and so the people that were speaking for him was, was obviously John uh, and his fiance at the time, Stella. And it was the two of them that we followed on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and so it's, it's, it's kind of a film to understand Julian, understand his beliefs through the people that love him and his supporters as well. And so that was really an interesting challenge to me and, and I just fell into it. It was such, a, such an incredible experience. Very complex story, which we tried to reduce down to the idea of a father's quest to, to really to, to save his son against one of the, you know, the, the largest adversaries in the world, the US government. Incredible story, and um, uh, it, it, it really left me gobsmacked about him, uh, Julian, still being uh, in jail and also um, potentially being extradited. And, and I suppose, uh, when's the next hearing uh, about that extradition? Well, the, uh, so that Julian um, had his appeal to the Supreme Court rejected. Yeah, uh, and that and that was uh, a few weeks ago now. Um, so the next the next stage of the hearing is that uh, the U.S. Home Secretary uh, will sign off on the extradition order, and then it will go before the magistrates' court, and then Julian has another chance to appeal uh, to launch an appeal uh, at that at that point, um, which which would go to the High Court if it's heard. Uh, he also has another opportunity to go to the European Court of Human Rights. Uh, in Brussels, but um, yes, that's a yeah, that's it's a long sort of it's a long road, and and it's this sort of never-ending legal um, you know legal maze that that Julian's trapped in, and that whole time, all this legal proceedings has been going on. He's um, you know he's been in 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 the harshest prison in the UK, where they keep uh, murder all the most dangerous prisoners, uh, and he's there not serving a sentence. Uh, he's been there for three years and with these future court proceedings could be there even longer uh and yeah it's just this sort of um you know legal legal maze that he's trapped in at this time um always sort of held over his head um the um the threat of extradition to the usa amazing absolutely amazing and uh, uh it's so interesting how there are various people uh, in the film. John Pilger is there, I noticed, and Noam Chomsky and, uh, uh, and a few other people who are uh, all rallying, rallying to the cause. And it's, it seems amazing that um, this is still occurring, that he's still in jail, that it's still uh, the basis of uh, uh, an incredible situation. I'm, uh, as I said, I'm quite gobsmacked by it all. And I'm so glad this documentary is there to reveal it. Tell me, um, why the title Ithaca? I know Ithaca sort of means journey, I think, or quest, uh, but why the title? Uh, well, we, John, when he's on the road, uh, John has, uh, you know, ups and downs and, and when uh, things aren't really feeling like, um, you know, they're not going your way or you have a particularly tough day or um, John uh, likes to listen to this poem, Ithaca, which is a Cavafy, uh, Cavafy poem. In particular, he likes a reading by Sean Connery uh, that's on YouTube. So, uh, you know, it had a sort of, that was the spark of that, that um, you know, the idea for that title. But yeah, it certainly has that, uh, lots of different meanings. Um, you, know, uh, you know, Ithaca could be Australia, you know, uh, we're, so trying to come, trying to bring Julian home uh, to Australia. Okay, really interesting. John is, is quite prickly at times uh, during the film and uh, especially about his relationship with his son, Julian. And uh, I, I found that quite interesting that, um, um, and Ben, certainly as you were filming this and, and Gabriel too with uh, uh, John as your father, that must have been quite awkward at times in terms of the the way that John was filmed uh, and and responded to to questions and so on. Yeah, I mean, John never really answered any of the questions I asked him, which is, in one part, very fascinating and very interesting because it was always something unexpected. Um, and uh, there was a, as someone's described it, a kind of a wrestling of the narrative. You know, John John loves films and loves stories in particular. You know, he's a very broad reader and uh, has a and 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 understands the world through stories in a lot of ways so the idea of we were trying to tell his story 
um, through a very imperfect process of documentary filmmaking, uh, you know, has its own frustrations for everyone involved. But we're also in the middle of this court case, so it, there, there's there's an automatic kind of reticence to, to give too much information. Um, but John, in of himself, um, was kind of the perfect character, I think, on screen be, because of that. I mean, I'm always suspicious of people who are very keen to be in front of a camera, and John certainly didn't want that. He's a reluctant kind of hero, if you if you like. Um, but it was difficult. I mean, we we were living together for a, for a period of time. We would go and do these interviews that are the kind of the spine of the film in the kitchen, and um, I think we ended up doing about thirteen hours in there over the period of the the months, few months we were there. And I'd always try and grab him and and say, "Come and have a chat." It wasn't he'd, he'd never volunteer it. Um, but I learned a lot. I mean, I've kind of described John as someone who is very much present and in the world. He's, you know, thinks very deeply of the world. Um, and, he, and, and in understanding Julian, you can see the way in which um, he's able to abstract storytelling and, and thought processes and, and see a larger picture uh, of things. And so that was very interesting for me to get that confirmed by people that know the, both of them. Um, but also, I think that John, he's not of this world. Um, he he able to sit outside it and look in and and thank God for him because um, some of the things that uh, the way he framed um, answers for me really left me to ponder a lot of things and and I, I really appreciate that but no it wasn't it wasn't easy because um, sometimes you just want one piece of information of what happened today and it was never it was never that straightforward and the other thing I should say is he was under an extreme amount of stress during that period as well so interesting for uh the audience but uh, very challenging for him i would say and, and us in, to a, to a certain degree sure and, and that's uh, sort of the part of the fascination of the documentary i think it's that uh, that stress that uh, certainly uh, john was under and, and he's uh, reflecting that uh, on screen which i found very interesting it's um so as you mentioned you 13 hours of, of footage just with uh, <laughs> with uh, john and uh, plus all the other footage and uh, the travels um that uh, in the film talk about the editing process um because that must have been quite a um quite an issue for for both of you Oh, it was incredibly challenging, the editing process. We, we initially had about six months, uh, which I think was, you know, kind of a, a healthy amount of time. We, we took a bit longer than that. But, you know, it's a, it's a very complex story, and in particular, the way we chose to tell it, because you have this very personal story of John, but Julian being a global figure and trying to understand him through John and through Stella uh, was obviously the, the idea of the film. But then, you know, this story's been going on for a decade or longer. And so you want to assume that the audience knows something. But um, part of the challenge of the story is that some people could disengage because it gets too complex. So we really lent into the, got the idea of a uh, father trying to save his son and try to reduce it down to those principles. But in the end, um, the film is made of the most, uh, I would say, engaging and enriching and enlightening kind of uh, moments and we just observe, and there is obviously John's interview and Stella's interview that, that kind of stitch it together, but it's really just observing the family um, in phone calls with Julie in, in talking to each other, in trying to strategize about what they should be doing. Talking to the press is a, is a big part of um, what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. And then also this framework of, of, of obviously the, the, the extradition hearing um, into trying to understand the story. So. It, it, it's I, I kind of I hope the audience can place themselves in that and, and ask themselves what would they do if they had a loved one in that situation and how would they take the first step and what what's remarkable about this is that uh, Stella with her legal background um, but she's still the mother of uh, Julian her two boys and 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 John as a as a self-taught builder and, and designer they just throw themselves into it and and again going back to the title of the film it is really and John says this, that it's really just about embarking on this journey, is taking this challenge. And I think we can all take a, um, take a leaf out of that because sometimes when we are overwhelmed with issues within the world, it's really just taking that first step. And I think it, it's a film about a campaign. It's, about, it's a really about a grassroots campaign of a family just trying to embark on this uh, huge battle.
Um, and, and that in itself is, is inspiring, particularly John at the age that he's in, he's in his late seventies now and he's unstoppable. So all these elements are just really remarkable, I think. They are. And, and Gabriel, for you, of course, being so intimately involved in this whole journey, uh, uh, it, it must have been quite a process for you uh, in terms of being in the middle of it, uh, producing it and so on, and, uh, and witnessing your father and, uh, and his responses. Yeah, I mean, I, I would um, come into the edit suite and um, learn things about my family most days <laughs> when we were in there. Um, so it, it was uh, it was interesting in that way. Um, you know, we uh, we just had, you know, John was very supportive uh, the whole time of, of of you know what we what we sort of set out to do. So um, I think it, it made that made things a lot easier. That you know he was um, you know he was unwilling, but also you know, very supportive of, of what, of the sort of what would the actual, you know, premise and, and what we were actually trying to achieve. So that, that was really important and wouldn't, have, we wouldn't have been able to do it otherwise. Sure. But um, yes, it's, uh, it, it is a balance of, um, you know, what the, the amount of our personal lives that gets, <clears throat> that we put, that we put out there. Um, it's always, it's always a balance um, because, that that is what that is what we have, and then that's how we um, advocate for Julian is our personal family connection, and so you're always trying to balance that with the actual issues in the case. And uh, I think you know with with this documentary, we've sort of struck struck a quite a um, an engaging balance, if you will, something that that um, you know brings audiences in enough to the personal story that they're able to uh, also learn about their case uh, as well. Yep. How did John respond to the film? Yeah, he, he's. I mean, he, he responded well. Um, he he had a few a few comments, um, but um, nothing. <laughs> he didn't uh, get up and leave or anything like that. So it, it was it was good. Uh, yeah. And the, okay, great. Now the film is uh, rolling out in Australia in in April, and film being. Uh, potentially an agent of change and hopefully galvanizing people maybe around the world. Is the film getting a worldwide release and are you hoping that the film will create, I suppose, more support for Julian? Yes, so we've got quite a large impact campaign uh, planned around the theatrical release in Australia. Uh, we're sort of uh, dropping the movie right at that time, just before the election. So it's, uh, you know, an interesting uh, time to bring up Julian's issue and hopefully uh, we can uh, sort of pin down some of the you know the leaders of the major parties on it and, and get them to take a take a position um, so yeah there is sort of this sort of flow on you know this impact campaign aspect um, to the film as well uh, we are planning a, a major uh, we are planning an international release um, we're, we're just working on locking in a, a international premiere at the moment but um, definitely sort of basing in Australia and moving out from there is the plan at the moment. Okay. Well, I wish you well with the film. I, I think it'd be interesting to see it released in the US. Uh, that, the reaction there would be very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, Ben, I must ask you just very quickly, just to conclude, are you working on other projects at the moment? Um, I'm not. I'm focusing on the, you know, the completion of this and uh, you know, the rollout. The impact campaign is such a, a key part of the release of a documentary of this nature. Yeah. So everything's really focused on that. And you know, Q and A's and, and trying to go to screenings and particularly, as Gabriel mentioned, in the lead up to the election. So that in itself is a full time job. So I'm trying to give myself as much, as much time to that as possible. Sure. And Gabriel, would you be considering a, a follow up based on what decisions or happen uh, during this year, uh, a, a sequel to Ithaca? <laughs> um, I, I don't, I don't, may, maybe something a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's a sequel. Um, I don't know if we'd go for a sequel, but definitely, I mean, it's so rich, uh, all, all, all this, this history of WikiLeaks and, and the sort of, you know, what, what, what Julian's been put through and, and all the players and, and 
um, you know, it goes right to the very top of uh, of the U.S. government, of the British government, mm -hmm. uh, of the Australian government. So it is so it's such a rich space uh, for filmmaking and documentary uh, that, that certainly um, look at another way to uh, attack it. And the whole exposure of of government corruption, so to speak, and uh, and and Snowden was another one, of course, who's uh, a key player in this, uh, uh, and Edward Snowden, I think, and uh, and other people. It's uh, it is amazing, and it's an ongoing journey. Look, congratulations on Ithaca. We've been speaking to Gabriel Ship Shipton, who is the uh, producer. Um, and I suppose uh, important family member as part of uh, Ithaca and Ben Lawrence, who's the writer director of Ithaca uh, and the film is releasing in Australian cinemas uh, in April. Go and see it and uh, uh, witness something quite incredible. Thanks so much for talking with me. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, thanks. Bye-bye. Ciao.